What's up, good people? Mark Holtz here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Man, I have been up on a roof all day long and um, just stopped working. Me and Mike are over here at the hotel, motel, Holiday Inn, and um, chilling here for the night and in the morning we got to fix a deck we got to literally take off all the top deck boards and put them down and then tomorrow night we'll be headed back home i hate being away from a man cave because it's so much easier to be able to deal with all the stuff that's going on when i'm back at the house but you know what um you still uh, you know you know me i'm gonna do and take care of you guys with all the news about the dallas cowboys so a couple of things Dak Prescott, well, let's just go through the whole injury report right now. Um, there's a couple of guys that we didn't know about. Um, Blake Jarwin has got a hip issue. Blake Jarwin hip, he did not practice today. Now, understand, today is like a limited, it's like a half-speed, half-ass practice, a, a walkthrough, uh, because we had a game Sunday night. Had we had a 1 o'clock or 4 o'clock game, it would have been... A regular practice for the Cowboys, forgive me, I've been up early and I don't sleep much at night. I'm actually doing research in the middle of the night because when you're old, you got to get up and go pee in the middle of the night and then you're wide awake. So you're just kind of like, okay, while I'm awake, I might as well just do some work. So I don't sleep a lot. But anyway, Blake Jarwin, hip issue, uh, not sure what the status is going to be. Uh, of course, it's just Wednesday. Tomorrow is the big practice. I'm not sure Friday, which typically is just kind of a walkthrough practice, what that's going to actually entail. Uh, but we'll find out. Um, and there'll probably be a regular practice, and then Saturday will be the recovery day. Um, Tyron Smith, we know um, we're going to be watching him closely because he's got the bone spur in his foot. And there's no guarantee that he's going to play. And that's what they're talking about. Maybe Lyle Collins ends up playing. Um, back at right tackle, and Terrence Seal shifts to the other side. Amari Cooper, hamstring. We remember seeing him working on the sideline there, having the softball underneath the leg and trying to stretch it out, and then getting the game-winning uh, catch. Something about doing the game-winning throws and catches that just seemed to be bad for the Cowboys because, you remember, Dak Prescott threw the game-winning throw. He hurts his ankle. I mean, his, uh, yeah, his calf. So hopefully Amari will be okay. He was limited, so he did practice. It wasn't that he was out. Uh, CeeDee Lamb, ankle issue, again, limited. Uh, Dak Prescott, calf, limited. So the fact that they actually practice some and being limited is actually good. The ones to worry about are Blake Jarwin and Tyron Smith. Um, Donald Armstrong, who was uh, questionable last week, he was a full participant, digs with his ankle full and Sean McKenna, the tight end, uh, backup tight end, was full. So that's where we are with those guys. So hopefully they'll be good to go. Um, I've got to go pick up some food here in a minute, so I want to get this in before I go. Uh, the Cowboys, they're going to be doing something that they haven't done since I was a kid, since I was a kid back in the 70s. With uh, this month, Salute to Service, they're going to be going to throwback red, white, and blue stripes on the helmet, which is really, really cool. Um, I, maybe I need to try and figure out some way to do something to salute the service for that. Maybe I'll take a Joe Barty and I'll go blue on one side, red in the middle, and then, oh no, red red on the outside, blue on this side, and white in the middle. Maybe I'll do a Joe Barty special for this week's salute the service, and we'll give that away because that, that's actually pretty cool. Um now, here's what I want to talk about here. A good friend of mine, good, good, good supporter of the channel and stuff, he sent me a text and he said, hey, what do you think, since Michael Gallup's going to want to get the bag of money, that we cut Michael Gallup and we sign Deshaun Jackson? Pump the brakes here. And I'm not trying to go after you, buddy, okay? But what happens so many times is people will gravitate to a name they know. They're name players. Like right now, I guarantee you we'll have some people when Odell Beckham gets cut, 
sometime in the next few days. We should go get Odell Beckham. We need that guy. Odell, at this point in his career, is a shell of himself. Never mind his, you know, where he is literally a wedge that drives your locker room crazy, drives coaches crazy. He's a cancer. But in your mind, when you say Odell, you think of those spectacular one-handed catches. Bro, that was a long time ago. He's not the same guy. And the same thing of the Rams getting Von Miller. I'm not sure that Von Miller, Von Miller is not the Von Miller of four or five years ago or Von Miller that won the Super Bowl. Von Miller is having a harder time staying healthy. Yeah, he's got, I think, four and a half sacks this year or, or something like that. But you got to understand some of the competition that Denver faced. They faced the Jets early in the season. They faced the Jaguars. Um, i trying to think of the other team. But they faced, at the time, that when they were 3-0, and teams that were terrible. Well, let, let me look up here. Hold on. I'll tell you what. Let me do this. I'm not saying that Von Miller isn't still a good player. Um, so he got two sacks on Dan Daniel Jones. He got one sack against Trevor Lawrence and one sack against the Jets. So the first three games of the season, he had four sacks. Since that time, he's had a half sack against the Ravens. None against the Steelers, none against the Raiders, none against the Browns. So he's got 19 tackles, four and a half sacks. And that's a second and a third round pick. But in your mind, you're saying, oh my God, we got to get Von Miller. It's a name player. So back to this whole Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson, who's made more stupid plays than I care to shake a stick at. I remember when he was really young, him literally spiking the ball before he got across the end zone. I remember in a game we should have lost with Matt Castle, the only win we got without Tony Romo, the Cowboys were down and basically were only able to kick field goals. Washington was up. All they had to do was run out the clock. Deshaun Jackson fields the ball on the nine-yard line because I remember this because I was in the end zone. Runs backwards and fumbles on the six-yard line. We recover the football, kick a field goal, and win the game. Deshaun Jackson, another one of those me, 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 me guys. So you think, let's bring him in because Michael Gallup's going to want to get paid. Listen, here's the thing with Michael Gallup. You are at a win-win situation with Michael Gallup. Everybody's always wanting to get rid of Michael Gallup. Stop. Here's the thing. One of two things are going to happen. Either Michael Gallup's season really just is not that good, and his price comes back down where you may say, hey, you know, it's kind of come back down, and you can re-sign him at a good price. Or, or, he ends up leaving, and he goes to another team. As a free agent, if he ends up getting a great contract, that's where compensatory picks come in. Yeah. Depending on how big a contract it is, and looking at wide receivers, when you think about what uh, the Giants paid for Galladay, I'm sure that Michael Gallup will be worth something like that then you're talking about at least a fourth, maybe a third round pet story pick. Oh, so you'll have that pick there. If you were to release him now, you got nothing. Nothing. So that move doesn't work. Now, earlier today, there was an article about Lyle Collins. Could the Cowboys cut him? Well, you could, but knowing Tyron Smith's injury situation, you're not cutting the guy. If you think that this is all in for the Super Bowl, and instead of saying we need to go out and get some other people to, fit, to come in and play, 
you got guys right here. His salary is pretty much already done this year. If you want to cut him next year, if you want to cut him next year, yeah, I could say, okay, after the season, because he's a $15 million cap hit. If you did, if you figured that, well, Terrence Steele's really good, and, you know, we want to hold on to Connor McGovern, and, you know, so on, that would make sense there. That would make sense, because then you'd save the money on him, on your cap number, and so on. In the meantime, you take a look around. Michael Thomas, wide receiver. They thought he was going to be back, gone for the season. If that happens, we got Cedric Wilson, we got and we got Michael Gallup. We got backups. You know, our offensive line. If Tyron Smith can't go, hey, we can shuffle around. We got Connor Williams. I mean, it should be Connor McGovern, and we got Lyle Collins, you know, or we just put them in the backfield and have them as blocking lead backs. Okay, I'm okay with that. And we're getting more firepower. I think you guys don't seem to understand that you're getting a Demarcus Lawrence back. You're getting a Navelle Gallimore. You're getting a Tristan Hill. You're getting a Michael Gallup. On some teams, those four guys are all starters and impact players. We can ease them back into the system, and then we're good to go. So I got a text message saying that my food's ready, so I'm going to go get that. But I'll be back. You know, you know I'll be back. All right, but that's my thing. Stop trying to get rid of Michael Gallup, okay? Peace.